Okay, uh, so first, I, will, I want to thank uh, the uh, organizer, give me a chance to uh, represent my work. Uh, I come from uh, Germany, uh, Karlsruhe, so my work, and then this talk about uh, effective long distance from short distance, maybe these are two key words, uh, two key uh, words here, and this paper published on um, PIA. So I work together with the PhD uh, the student, uh, Mo Dan Liu, and Dr. Mihir Matala, and also um, Professor Gershon is uh, my boss. Okay. <coughs> so uh, first I give a short uh, review of uh, 1G guest and uh, introduce our model. And, and, and this part is uh, the, uh, it's the key uh, part of my talk. Uh, I introduce uh, interaction in the face space and I'll show some uh, uh, many body uh, dynamics. Okay, so first is uh, the short review of uh, 1D gas. So the 1D gas has been invested uh, as early as uh, 1936 by Tonks. Uh, in his paper, he introduced uh, a, free, uh, a, one, a free particles, uh, a free particles uh, in 1D system. So, and they have a contact interaction. This means that these particles can only have interaction when they contact each other. And they have a, a contact, uh, the strength, a G here. And in this paper, he invited the G go to infinity limit. This, uh, this is called a uh, hard uh, spheres. And uh, later on, uh, in 1960, uh, uh, Giardio, so he solved the problem of quantum uh, gas, the both gas. And, uh, and found some interesting like uh, uh, forming, uh, forming uh, ionization. Uh, and uh, later, so in 1963, um, uh, so uh, Lieb and Lidinger, they extended this work into arbitrary point-like interactions. The G goes to any uh, real uh, numbers. So, and they got exact solutions of this. And, uh, and later, uh, Young, Training, he investigated the thermal uh, dynamics of this model. And this is a pure theory. And uh, if you want to find a more interesting thing, you can go to the review papers on this. And in the recent years, because of the development of cold atoms, people can uh, realize this kind of uh, a TG gas uh, and found some, and, and found some uh, thing like uh, 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 the formalization or something like that, in interesting things. Okay. Uh, here in our model, we introduce uh, uh, this, uh, 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 this model here. They, in our model, there are some the key ingredients different from uh, the free particles. We trap these uh, particles in a harmonic trap. So we we need a harmonic, a very strong harmonic trap, and uh, we also add a periodically uh, driving uh, field uh, here, and we also consider the, uh, the interactions. So I want to stress on that uh, in this talk, uh, we only consider the classical dynamics because uh, in this time, in the classical re regime, we already found some interesting things. The quantum work is uh, being prepared. Um, so uh, let's. Right, the Hamiltonian here. Let's explain the Hamiltonian more. So uh, this, this is just uh, the harmonic uh, uh, oscillator, many independent harmonic oscillators. Then I add uh, a driving. So gamma is uh, uh, um, a scaled uh, dimension is a driving strength. And omega here is just a ratio of uh, omega, your driving frequency over your harmonic frequency. This can be near to one, two, three, some integers uh, here. So, and this is the interaction. Here we assume any type of uh, interaction. Um, so I, here, uh, we, we have uh, uh, the driving field actually is very small. So, uh, so any particle, the, uh, the motion of uh, any particle is still dominated by the global, this kind of global oscillation. And just uh, their amplitude and the phase just uh, changed a bit. So we can separate the total motion of uh, 
uh, one particle into a fast uh, oscillation, like uh, a fast oscillation mode and uh, a slow mode, like this here. This is, uh, this is the X and the P. So if, if uh, there is no driving and no interaction, this, uh, uh, this capital X and capital P just a constant. is a harmonic uh, oscillator. But if you add some driving and interaction, this will change the bit. So we are interested in the slow dynamics of capital X and capital P. So you plug this back into this Hamiltonian, then you throw away this fast oscillation term. This is called the rotating wave approximation. Then you get a time independent Hamiltonian like this. Yeah. So actually, this part is uh, become it comes from uh, comes uh, from the driving. Uh, we discussed in this paper, but uh, in this talk we focus on this interaction. So part we we ask uh, what will be the interaction in the uh, in the rotating frame uh, from this uh, real uh, interaction. Um, okay, so first I want to show uh, some uh, equations of motion, which I do some uh, I use the numerical. Uh, code to simulate the, the dynamics. So in the rest frame, so uh, the equation of motion is dominated by this, uh, is given by these equations. Then, uh, the, then you, from this equation of motion, there's no uh, approximation here, then you get x, you can get some motion of this, then you take uh, the value of uh, x and p every time period. A delta t. This is called, uh, or sometimes it's called a Penkai uh, making. Then you got stroboscopic dynamics. So it's just uh, like this. So this is, uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, propeller of uh, a plane. So of course it cannot, uh, so it shows very, very slow motion, but uh, in fact it's slow. It's it rotates very fastly. This is because of your camera. So your, your camera is uh, take uh, 24 pictures every second. So you, you will just see this uh, uh, the slow motion. Yeah. So th this is called the stroboscopic dy dynamics. And uh, you can also go to the rotating frame. This means you rotate with uh, this, then see the, dy uh, see the dynamics. Then this dynamic is directly given by uh, G this uh, Hamiltonian introduced before. And this is a rotating wave approximation. We already use the rotating wave approximation. So there's no approximation here. There's a rotating wave approximation here. I will use two, both of these to check uh, my results. OK. So and uh, the, the thing that uh, we ask, uh, what is this? This is a key problem. Then I want to solve this. And this uh, problem is solved in this paper. So here I only tell you the results. I don't give you some details. So first uh, we introduce a phase space distance. So you have a particle here and here. Particle i, particle j introduce a phase space distance. Okay. Then you give me a real interaction, Vx. Cooling interaction, contact interaction, or some other kind of interaction. Then you do, the, uh, do this Fourier transformation, you get a Fourier coefficient uh, VQ. Then you use uh, this VQ, and this is a zeroth, uh, zeroth order the Bessel function. You do the interval, then you get this. This is the, basically the result. And maybe here, it's a little math. Uh, there's a, it's a math. So what is the physics meaning of this? So you use uh, uh, the formula of a beta function, then you plug it back, you will get this, uh, you will get an equivalent form here. Now you see, this is a very, uh, uh, the, the meaning is very interesting, uh, it's very clear now. So the interaction here is just uh, the average interaction every time period, because uh, your, your two particles do this uh, the oscillation, then you average the interaction every time period, you get uh, uh, the phase space interaction I should here. Okay, so I, then I will use, use this to, sh to calculate some uh, examples here. <coughs> so first, I use, uh, we assume the interaction of two particles is uh, uh, a rectangular potential. This means if the two particles are far away, they have uh, no interaction. Only in very short distance, they have uh, a constant uh, interaction. It, this is just a model uh, interaction. So this is a short distance interaction. We assume the, the 
the distance is very short. Then we use our, our results to calculate. Now you, you see there's a long tail now, so long tail. Then we see that, uh, and the long tail, the a symbol, uh, symbolic uh, behavior is like a one over R, it's a cooling type. Now we, we, we have a long distance interaction from a short distance in, uh, interaction. This is uh, what uh, I mean uh, in the beginning, for, from the beginning, okay? Then we go to another example, where the cooling interaction. So we assume the real particle is cooling. Uh, uh, here you should know the cooling interaction we assume is very small, so they cannot form some uh, uh, crystal st uh, st uh, structure. It's a control. The beta is very small. Then you use our result to calculate. You will find, to do the inter, you will find there's a, this is divergent. So two, there's divergent. So to, to get out this divergence, we can introduce a cutoff here, tau C. Then you get a finite re result. This is uh, the renormalization, but you, you, you will ask, uh, uh, how do we determine the tau C, the cutoff? So uh, actually, the physics meaning is that because of the cooling interaction, when they uh, approach each other, they will go to infinity. So in reality, the two particles never touch each other. They have a very small distance, RC. Then you can use uh, uh, you, you the, uh, the energy uh, conservation law to estimate the RC. Then you introduce the cutoff. So we also introduce uh, a gamma called the collision factor. This is because when they collide, the orbit will change a bit. So this is a, a factor. So anyway, this is important. Uh, you can you first calculate this, then you gather the result. So I, now I use this procedure to, to, get, so to get the smallest distance, RC, and the cutoff, and then, then you plug it into the here. Now you get this form. Now you see that the phase space uh, interaction now is still in the form of cooling type, but uh, with the renormalized coupling and the strength here. Beta, beta is given by this. It depends on your, um, your kinetic uh, uh, energy. So uh, this is the logarithm depends on. So it's, this is uh, nearly a constant. Uh, okay, so I check this. So here, uh, this is two particles. Well, I put one particle here, one particle here. If there is no interaction, uh, if there is no interaction because uh, the, we also have a driving, so these uh, two particles will do this small circle here. Then we, if we add the interaction, the circle will become larger here. So you can see that uh, here I use both methods. Non no approximation and rotating wave approximations, they are just uh, the overlap each other. So this means that this uh, formula is good uh, under the, our approximation. Okay, so now I go to a very a general case, like uh, uh, inverse power law, uh, the potential here. So if N is a one over two, say it's just a cooling uh, interaction. If N is one, it goes a little deeper here, uh, the, uh, the, the deeper here. And n three and even uh, steeper, and you go to n, you go to in, infinity. It's uh, just a hard curve interaction. You can you can model the hard curve interaction. Okay, then I use this use our formula. I calculate the phase space interaction like this. So you can see the blue is uh, the cooling interaction. It's still like uh, a cooling interaction, but uh, for if n is one, it, you 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 will you will see that. Uh, now the, this interaction becomes a constant. Then if you go to even deeper, you will see it's increased now. It's not decreased, now it's an increase. And if for the hard curve interaction, it will go, it's become a linear. And this is a summary of uh, the results here. For the hard curve interaction, it goes to linear. And uh, this is uh, for a general case, when the integers and the half integers like this. And some interesting, I show you some interesting cases here. If n is one, uh, then it's a constant. So I checked uh, numerically. You can see, no matter I change the strength, so the uh, uh, the non-rotating wave approximation and the rotating wave approximation they are very good with each other. Then, if there's a, 
because uh, infinity is, the lin uh, is linear. So it's like a, a quark interaction. So it's just, uh, uh, but why? You mean here, why it's become a linear? I, a simple uh, explanation is that if the two particles are hard curve, they, they like to move together, synchronize together. If you push them a little a bit, they will collide. So they don't like this, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, the state. They like, like uh, just oscillate together. This is the why it's linear. Okay, so I just show you some interesting uh, uh, the simulation here. So uh, if you put two particles here, and assume their distance is r, uh, so if there are no interaction, uh, there are not, no interaction, so uh, uh, I also said uh, the driving is very weak, so uh, the, the total physics, the total dynamics is dominant by their interaction. So if I put two particles here, if there are no interaction, so they're just a fixed point because uh, you, because uh, the harmonic oscillation is just a periodic oscillation. You see, so uh, periodically, it's just a fixed point. Then if they have interaction, they will rotate. They will rotate with some frequency. It's uh, just, uh, just uh, like this. If you have two, two particles here, they will just rotate. So, and this rotating frequency can be given by this, by this formula. So, the U is here is, is renormalized phase space interaction. So, this is the analytical result. And uh, we check it uh, with the numerical simulations here. These dots are from the real time, the uh, numerical simulation without uh, uh, rotating wave approximation. And uh, the solid curve is just from analytical result. So, you see that, um, Actually, this picture also shows the, um, uh, the validity of our approximation. So our approximation only holds for large R. So if the two particles are large enough, they, this, uh, this, uh, this, our approximation is, uh, is very good. But if they are close here, the short distance, if they are too close, they the large difference. Uh, so the large distance means uh, the kinetic energy is very, is very large. So this is the kinetic energy. Uh, so our approximation is valid in the, in the case of kinetic energy is very large, their interaction energy. Mm. Okay. Then I will show, this, uh, show, show you these uh, three, three body dynamics. Uh, Two-body dynamics it, it can be solvable, but three-body dynamics in general we cannot solve it analytically. I just show some results. So you can see here if uh, I put three particles, this is a particle, this is three, this is particle two, this is a particle uh, three. If they are, this is very close to each other, and this is a little uh, far from each other. So for coolant interaction, because their phase space uh, interaction is still a coolant interaction, this means. Uh, their interaction is much stronger than this one. So actually, these two particles, they rotate very fast, like uh, this show, this one. And uh, the center of uh, this uh, system and rotate with uh, the first particle together with a large circle and this uh, and uh, low frequency. This is uh, what you see here. This is the center of mass motion. But for the hard current, I I told you for the hard curve interaction, then the, the, the interaction is linear. This means uh, the interaction between particle one and particle three is larger than particle three and particle two. So you can see you, you will not see this kind of uh, the behavior. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, so it's, it's different from this. You don't see this kind of uh, faster frequency because of uh, their inter uh, uh, because of this, uh, uh, this Subsystem, you cannot see this kind of uh, fast oscillation. Okay, and uh, you can see uh, the yeah I compared uh, with the, the rotating wave approximation and non-rotating wave approximation. Okay, the last slide I will show you some uh, uh, okay this is also so here this is a real time uh, evolution. I put the same initial condition. This is three particles. And for the cooling interaction, you will see, you will see that these two particles just rotate uh, with each other, then the whole system and rotate with this. Uh, and uh, the rotating frequency, uh, and the frequency is very, is very slow. 
But for the hard current action, so because the interaction is linear, you will see a very different the picture. Here, now that these two particles, they don't have a center. Now, they, they, they just uh, rotate with this, actually. So, yeah, so, and also, you can also see uh, uh, the direction. This is, uh, the direction is opposite. This is along this direction, and this direction is different. And also, this is a very fast. Uh, yeah, uh, this is, um, this is because uh, the interaction is, uh, uh, is, uh, is linear, like this. Okay, so it will summary of my work. So we found that uh, long distance interaction can be produced by a short distance interaction. And uh, we, 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 we found this is maybe, maybe useful because in the code atom system, you only have a contact interaction. Mm. Uh, but uh, normally, so in the code atom system, you don't have a cooling-like interaction. So if you, so here, use, uh, we found that uh, you can use, even use the contact interaction could, uh, to produce a long distance uh, cooling-like interaction. Maybe it's useful for the code atoms. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, we explain this by this. So uh, we separate the motion of your particle into a fast oscillation mode. Uh, and uh, a slow uh, also, and a slow evolution. The phase space in interaction descri describes the interaction between the slow modes and the fast oscillation modes uh, just take a role like uh, a force carrier, something like that, something like this. Um, and technically, we uh, we, we remote uh, the divergence by introducing some renormalization methods. Okay, so the next step is we will ex extend our study to the quantum regime. Okay, thank you.